Good afternoon, everyone. I thought I was live a minute ago, but I didn't press the button, Marta, so it doesn't work if you oh, don't right, press okay. the button. Oh, so uh, good afternoon. It's, it's, it's really appreciated that people have come out, um, I've, I've given a bit of time to, to take part in this this afternoon. It's really appreciate it. My name's James. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of what we're going to do for revision today. We've also got with us Marta, I think, is going to come onto the screen for a second, Marta, are yes. you? Yes, hello. How are you doing? So, so Marta's with us as well. And um, yeah, we're going to we're going to give you a bit of an introduction about the, the, the Everlearner revision this year. So hopefully it's going to be insightful for you. Um, we're not going to talk really much at all to begin with, but just a couple of introductory points. Um, first of all, it would be super useful for us if you could be kind enough and generous enough to go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It might not seem like very much to you, but by having additional subscribers on the channel, by you guys liking streams such as this, um, it means it basically enables us via that channel to be able to have more facility to do things. It switches things on that we would like to do. You can only have, you don't do that with a certain size of community basically. So it'd be really, really useful if you do do that. So subscribe um, to the channel, uh, like this stream, that'd be really, really, really nice. Secondly, all of the paperwork and documentation, which by, probably for this session, most of it will, you'll want to look at after the session. That's available in the description below the stream. So things I'm going to show you in a moment are things like our athlete profiles, our revision calendar, our revision notes. All of those are available just down below this, uh, the session itself. So go and have a look at those. Even if you just look at them on screen as we talk about them, it would be good for you to have an awareness of those and you can see how things are going to work. When we get to the real sessions with the students, those things will be provided for you in advance and you can um, you can benefit from them. Uh, you know, you, you can print them and get them get them ready. So about the revision this year i'm going to show you um the calendar in a second many of you will have it already in terms of uh, when we're going to be doing this but the first thing i'd sort of say to you guys is that we're putting these sessions out during the day in some occasions during the afternoon sort of immediately after kind of school college time and other sessions in the early evening so one o'clock four o'clock and six o'clock are the session times that we have how you guys manage that at the school is your choice um you can you can obviously get all of your students in and have them on the big screen you can get them in and have them on different computers that's really up to you we recommend you get them in and have them on a computer or a device each but of course we're going to be streaming to youtube and whether that's some blocked for students is is going to be tricky i think in some cases so we'll allow you guys to manage that as you wish and of course for the six o'clock shows you can have the students take them at home rather than being at school or at college. So that's that's entirely um, your call. So we're going to stream everything to YouTube and it's going to be streamed approximately in the fashion that we've got it tonight and today. So you can get a bit of a feel for that. The other thing I was going to say to you is that tonight's session is going to be about 40 minutes maximum, something like that. This The live sessions, the real revision sessions, they're going to be pretty much exactly 61 minutes. Okay, so we are doing a minute lead in and we are doing a 60 minute session. It's going to be really, really accurate. Now, I, I know sometimes we might do a 60 minute and a half or a 59 and a half or something like that. But that's where we're going to be with regards to the time. So everything's an hour. Everything's an hour when we get to um, when we get to that point. We are doing two subjects. We're providing you uh, physical education for GCSE, uh, for Cambridge Technical, BTEC Level 3 and for A Level. And we're providing you GCSE Spanish as well. Okay, so they're the subjects we're, we're covering this year. Of course, we're optimistic that this time next year that offer will be much broader, but we'll have to we'll have to see about that. And one of the questions that people have asked us about a lot is, is this exam board specific? And this is the way we're going to guide you on that. Everything we include in these sessions is going to be absolutely relevant for your exam board. So how are we doing that? Well, <clears throat> in Spanish, it's actually a little bit easier. There, there are fewer variables and there are fewer variations for us to um, for us to kind of to work around. So it, in the Spanish, there's going to be a little bit of reference to higher and foundation. There's going to be a little bit of reference for uh, to AQA and, and Edexcel. In in the PE, it's much more difficult to achieve that. So the way we're doing it is we're looking very heavily at the areas where there is dramatic overlap between all of the exam boards okay so we're not completely avoiding those areas where things are different but we're making it absolutely clear to you when we're going over those differences what those differences are so let me be clear here if we include it in these sessions it means that we are confident that it is in your interest to take part in it and if there is anything which is bespoke we're going to tell you that in advance and cover the range of things that need to be covered now if you come back to me and say, look, 
all I want is my students to be told exactly what's on their specification on their course. We think we're doing that, but ultimately that's what we provide with our other work. Go and use our other work. It is, it is exam board specific, it is bespoke, it goes through those processes and you can use that. But for this revision, we're making, and I think you'll see that with the session we're going to do tonight, we're, we're, making it, we're making it so that this is relevant for all exam boards. And for example, when I do a session in a few weeks' time on effective exercise for GCSE P PE, they're basically all the same with the exception of the AQA exam board, which structure it slightly differently. And we're going to reference that difference within the session so it's going to be relevant for everyone. So that hopefully answers um, that point. I want to quickly show you guys, uh, let me get it onto the screen here. Hopefully my sound is going to stay on. Yes, it has. Um, we're going to quickly show you guys a couple of resources that you need. So first things first, this is absolutely essential for all students and indeed for uh, this afternoon. We are producing notes pages for the session. So the movement patterns one, which I'm going to cover in a minute, um, is here and basically they're going to be the real things are going to be four pages uh, two pages of notes two pages of questions and tonight's a mini session so we've got one page of notes and we've got one page of questions okay so this is what the students are going to receive basically a double version of this for each individual session for the Spanish we also have that here for the comparative we have a, a notes page and we have practice questions and we're going to take you through the repertoire of what that's all about in a few moments time so it's essential that you have a, an idea that you're going to have those things secondly you know i mentioned already we we have the revision calendars already published so here this is the p calendar it starts on uh, 16th of april so immediately after the easter holidays the first gcc sessions on the 18th the gcc sessions are in yellow and you can see we've referenced the different exams um, down here so you need to have a look at it it's in if you don't have it already it's in the description of this stream go and have a look and finally just for you folks out there who are PE colleagues or PE students we're also focusing our entire PE revision whether it's BTEC, Cambridge Technical, A level whether it's social cultural whether it's biomechanical whether it's um, GCSE we're, we're focusing it completely around our five athlete profiles. So this is going to really help with the synoptic type skills. This is going to really help with those parts of the specifications that say we have to link the musculoskeletal system together. We have to look at, for example, the different biological systems together. We might even in some courses be answering questions which are synoptic at their heart. And we're answering a question which is sports psychology and social cultural studies. These profiles are going to help us to develop those skills with your students. So I highly recommend you get these, you print them off, you give them out to your students, you get them up on your walls, you do whatever you feel is appropriate. But they need to get familiar with these individuals because we're going to be talking about them a great deal, and including today. And that's going to be useful for you guys. Okay, so we, we think that that's um we think that that's really important to um to do that. Let me just come back onto the screen for a moment. So um that's where we are. I think Marta, have I have I missed anything that I should have um I sh I, sh I should have said in there before we before we get moving? Um, no, I think uh, your introduction has been perfectly complete. Very well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and I should have said as well. I didn't introduce Mike. Mike's um on the chat, but he's not in the office today. He's he's, he's down at home with uh, in Chichester working from home probably with Amelia on his knee I don't know certainly with a cup of tea in his hand I would imagine uh, and he's he's on the chat so I'm hoping he's active in there I'm sure he is so I'm, I'm, so if you get a, a chat a question if you've got a chat question post it either into um, into the chat on uh, YouTube if you've got a YouTube channel you, you would need to have that to do that otherwise post it onto Twitter and Mike will pick that up okay and he'll answer your questions as we go forward so um, Marta I think you're up first yes okay yes, so I am um, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, get you ready to go. You you get you, you happy ready? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah okay, so sure. so Martha's gonna Martha's gonna uh, put her session. It's about each session is gonna be something between seven and nine minutes. Uh, we're just gonna do a quick Spanish demonstration, then we're gonna do a, qu a quick P demonstration just to give you the feeling. And if you can follow along with the notes pages, that would be super useful because then you're gonna get the experience of what it's like to be a student. Marta, mm -hmm. are we ready? Uh, yes, we are ready. What I was going to say, oh, so what you're going to see is, is, is in a way like, uh, like a mini um, example of what a revision probably, session probably is. Probably one is quarter probably, of one session. Yeah, exactly. What it's, what it roughly is going to look like. Yeah, so one quarter of one of those hours, session, something like that. Okay, all set? Yep. Okay, let's go.
So we're going to remind ourselves here how to do the comparative, okay? The el comparativo, the comparative. And also, uh, we're going to, um, what do we need the comparative for? So the comparative is going to help us express better opinions, okay? And opinions are, as you know, really, really important when it comes to GCSE and, and writing and, and speaking. So um, in order to do that, we're going to look at the um, subjects, okay, and we, rem re we remember most of the school subjects, la geografía, do remember little things that we need to pay attention to, things like pronunciation of these, things like geografía, okay, um, things like when it comes to here, la religión, another g, okay, la religión, la geografía, also um, classic mistakes that people may do, don't put a H between the C and the N in, in la tecnología, okay, and um, other things worth remembering are things like, for example, the fact that uh, sometimes we group la geografía, la historia and similar subjects into um, las humanidades. Okay, worth remembering this. Las humanidades. We also group the languages into los idiomas los idiomas and also sciences okay we call it las ciencias in spanish notice these were these subjects here are uh, plural uh, but also las ciencias we can have la biología la física y la química okay so we can have them qui mica a bit squished but um we can have them separate or together Okay, so remember there are some subjects which are feminine, la geografía, la historia, and all of the subjects in this section here. Some are masculine, el teatro, el español, el francés, and some are plural, okay, feminine plural in this case. So let's have a look at some uh, sentences that, you know, basic sentences that we could express, uh, where we could express opinions, but with things like, for example, um, la tecnología, la tecnología es... Práctica. La tecnología es práctica. O uh, es activa. La tecnología es práctica o es activa. Um, we could say es entretenida. Entretenida, entertaining. Uh, la tecnología es relajante. So people may find it relaxing, relajante. Um, we could say es fácil o difícil, útil o inútil. Okay? We could also um, call it, we could also say la tecnología es complicada, for example. So remember, there are lots of adjectives that we can apply to subjects and express opinions. Um, Remember also that when we are expressing, when we are saying a, gen a general um, sentence, giving an opinion on a subject, we will use the article, okay, la tecnología, el dibujo. But if I say, for example, things like um, estudio and then a subject, okay, I could say, for example, estudio geografía. In that case, I am not going to use the article, okay? So do remember that th those articles, sometimes they're there in things like opinions and sometimes they are not. So once I've got subjects, I've got some um, adjectives, how am I going to compare? So there are three things that we need to use especially and remember especially to do comparisons. We can compare things in three ways, okay? So we're going to compare. So what comparisons can we do? We can compare saying that something is more, I don't know, beautiful, um, easy than something else. We can compare saying that it's less than something else, or we can compare saying that it's as something as something else. So let me give you an example. So I've got, uh, I'm going to take geografía. So I've got la geografía, la geografía es más entretenida que el teatro. La geografía es más entretenida que el teatro. So what do I need to remember here? Few things. So más, more, que, in this case meaning than. So I've got más que, more than. And in between I've got the adjective, in this case, entretenida. If I look at the ending of the adjective, I'll notice that it ends in an A. 
Why is that? Because geografía is feminine, okay? As this shows as well, la geografía. So the adjective needs to go in the same form as the first item that's being compared. Notice that la geografía is being compared to el teatro. El teatro is masculine, but it doesn't matter. It does not affect the adjective, okay? So la geografía es más entretenida que el teatro. That's if I want to say that something is more than something else. If I want to say that something is less than something else, I would say, for example, las ciencias, las ciencias son menos complicadas que el dibujo. Las ciencias son menos complicadas que el dibujo. Sciences are less complicated, less difficult than art. So what have I got here? Menos, less, que, than. In between, I've got the adjective. And what do I notice about the adjective? That if I look at the ending, it's in feminine plural because ciencias is feminine plural. El dibujo, as it happened before with el teatro, is masculine singular, but that does not affect the adjective, okay? So, más que, more than, menos que, less than. Another way how we can compare something is with, um, yeah, saying that is as, as something else. So, el francés, el francés es tan útil como el español. El francés es tan útil como el español. French is as useful as Spanish. So I've got tan, which is one as, como, which is the other as. In between, I've got the adjective útil, useful. In this case, útil is in the masculine form, although the masculine and the feminine are the same form. Um, and it's in the masculine singular form because <coughs> it matches the form of francés, okay? If instead of francés I had uh, las matemáticas, so I would have las matemáticas son tan útiles como, okay? Notice as well that here, okay, in the, in the case of ciencias as well, we change the verb to son because las ciencias is plural, okay? And now the final thing that I want to mention is that there are some adjectives that uh, don't do this more than, okay? Like in English you've got like bigger, smaller, um, We've got just a handful of adjectives that have uh, their special forms. So, for example, in Spanish, I've got grande, which is big. But if I want to say that something is bigger, I'll say mayor, okay, bigger or older. If I want to say that something is smaller, I'll say menor, which is smaller or younger. And the same happens with bueno, which is good. If I want to say that something is better, I'll say mejor. If I want to say that something is worse, I'll say peor, okay? So if I wanted to say, for example, that, uh, I don't know, uh, French is better than Spanish, I would say el francés, el francés es mejor que el español, okay? And in this case, I wouldn't say más mejor or más bueno, but just mejor, and I would still be using the So, uh, Marta, we uh, we're back. Pretty good, that. Yep. It's a bit. It's a bit. Dis you. It's a bit disturbing because y you you do it much more aesthetically than I do. I'm I'm all about the aesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, that that's great. So look, I mean, I think I think that gives people a really good in insight. I mean, the thing I would say to people there is that that is one quarter of one session, and there are ten sessions plus two. Yes, there are there are ten sessions which will be the the first 10 sessions are about language about yeah it's basically about language so about vocabulary and about grammar so it is you know it, it's as suitable to uh, uh, AQA or to edXL and there's no OCR um, right Am I, I said it in the chat no OCR yeah. there's um, I mean these ones would it, on the main would also uh, I would also be be suitable to uh, even IGCSE okay um, the last four sessions there are two sessions which are on listening and reading, one of which is more um, geared towards foundation, the other one more geared towards um, towards the higher. 
Mm -hmm. um, and these two have got AQA and GCSE in mind. They are very similar. The differences, I would say, in most cases are negligible. So we will... Um, and then the last two sessions are specifically geared towards the writing. Okay, and the thing I think people need to realise out, out there, whether they're uh, um, uh, MFL colleagues or whether they're P colleagues or other other subjects trying looking to sort of pass this on, your your students in uh, GCSE Spanish there <clears throat> could be taking up to forty eight of those mini sessions that for free. That's a lot, and you you need to get them on that. They need to access that. It's going to be really resourceful for people, so so get people on right. I think it's um, I think it's time I had my little go. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, if you could turn the sound down on, on mm -hmm. this microphone, and sure. so so for me, guys, before I before I do this, for me, I'm not going to do as much delivery because I think people are more familiar with how I kind of deliver things. I'm going to e explain more about how we're going to use the questions, then do a little bit of delivery. I'm going to do I'm going to do something that people find a bit confusing, which is the planes. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to touch on that as well. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that. So, I mean, Mart has given a really good session there, or really a taught session. My session is going to be slightly different to demonstrate to you guys what we're going to do here and what your students are going to experience. So the first thing I want to do is kind of start at the end. So I'm going to scoot past all of this stuff that I'm going to show you in a second. And I want to kind of show you the culmination point, which is over here. For, for what I want to do, the, the main point is to say that we're going to get to a, a series of demonstrations of exam answers. So we are going to demonstrate answers. Okay, we are going to demonstrate answers. And... I mean, I'm not going to do it live right now because we've already put the answers in here, but the teaching and the delivery is going to bring us to this combination point on any of these little mini mini topic areas. You'll see here, effectively, we're, we're focusing here on um, ball and socket and hinge joint of the, of the shoulder and of the knee, and we're focusing on our athlete profile, which we've mentioned to you already. So that's going to be really important is that each time we combinate a session, we're going to do this. But also, we're going to ask your students to answer these questions. Now, that's obvious, you know, during the sessions that they're taking often with you, they're going to they're gonna put the answers in, right? They're going to answer the questions, they're going to write an answer, that kind of thing. But you, but beyond that, we're going to provide an online opportunity where your students can go to this question as an interactive question and they can submit their answer, okay? So in that sense, what we're going to do is we're going to build up a repertoire of really high quality answers across the different people that submit theirs. And what we're going to do then is we're going to publish them, share the answers that we've got. Now this one, it's kind of completing a table of movement analysis. It's not going to be quite as useful as when we get into kind of prose base extended writing type answers. But when we get to that and we're sharing sort of really high quality work that's going to be super useful for people um, off the back of these sessions and that's going to be done in every session at least twice okay in every session at least twice where students are going to have the opportunity to go and submit an answer and then we'll look over it and, and publish ones that we think are really useful for people but anyway this is where we're ending up and as you can see up here you know before that happens we're going to use our athletic profiles in this case we've got Kate we're going to use our athlete profiles to get the knowledge developed in order to answer those questions so look here I've already put in a whole series of what might the teaching look like if we were looking here at the hip. You know, we would be going through these points, ensuring that the students were able to really kind of have a good grasp of those things. What I'm going to quickly do is do exactly the equivalent of that, but focus that on the elbow. So we're obviously looking here with Kate, okay, so here. And we've got this movement in this case of the right elbow. I mean, we could talk here about the left elbow, but the right's close to us, so we'll do that. And and the first thing we want to we want to say here is we'll put it down here is that the movement that we have in the image right now is the movement of flexion okay flexion is when the joint angle has decreased on a joint okay so the joint angle has decreased on the joint so that being flexion is in presence in our present now is present in our example now of course if she was to straighten her arm this hinge joint more of which in a second would be capable of extension but we would recognize this still image as a flexed position as i said a moment ago we effectively have a hinge joint okay so we have a type of synovial joint which is a hinge joint it allows movement only in terms of flexion and extension there is a slight exception at the ankle but we're not going to talk about that here um, but the hinge joint is the type of synovial joint we're referring to at the at the elbow and of course really importantly we're going to talk about the bones that articulate at this elbow so of course we know that here for example here for example we have the humerus 
which is one of our articulating bones. But we also have here, here on the thumb side of the forearm, we have the radius. And importantly, on the pinky side of the forearm, we have the we have the ulna, and I say importantly because, of course, the ulna is not just a sort of an additional bone in here. The tricep, more of which in a second, inserts onto the point of the ulna. So when we produce extension, it is the tricep pulling on the ulna. And that, of course, brings me to my other point here, the muscles that we're, in, we're interested in here. I'm interested in talking to the students, wrong pink I think, but I'm interested in talking to the students about the bicep muscle, not the bicep brachii at this level, just the bicep, and that bicep which inserts down here onto the radius, so that when it pulls upwards, that is producing the flexion that we see, <laughs> I shouldn't have written that so fast, the flexion that we see in Kate's elbow, okay? So that muscle is pulling up and is producing flexion by a contraction of the bicep. Now, as I've said already, the pair to that muscle, the tricep, or the tricep brachii, this muscle here, when it pulls up, of course, it's going to increase this joint angle. We're going to get rotation this way, and we're going to get extension of that elbow. So that's really important to us, that we understand what each of these muscles do. If the bicep contracts and shortens, it produces flexion. If the tricep contracts and shortens, it produces extension. We want to really get that home to the students. Now, at this point, I could just say that flexion and extension is movement in along or through the sagittal plane but it's much better we understand that yes we can identify it and we can name it here but this is where we go through a little bit further we're going to take this on we're going to assume we've looked at the hip we're going to assume we've looked at the shoulder we're going to assume that we've looked at the knee and we're going to have a look at planes now we wouldn't include this for the students but for you guys who are majority teachers out there how do we get this knowledge of planes across to the students okay well one of the ways we can do it is stand them in the corner of a room no longer traditional behavior thankfully for um sort of a disciplinary process but you see here we have this frontal plane here okay if this individual abducts their shoulder in that fashion their arm is moving along or through that frontal plane. If, however, let me just choose a different color. If, however, they flex their shoulder, it's moving along the sagittal, single G, double T, plane, the sagittal plane, as would be any form of flexion or extension. If, for example, we're talking about the transverse axis, often, uh, uh, the transverse plane, often the most difficult one to think about. If this individual rotates to face the other way, sort of like change of direction in sport, for example, or one, 180 turn, they're actually moving along or through the, the transverse plane. If even they rotate the humerus within the socket of the scapula, or indeed the femur in the, in the uh, pelvis, then they're rotating that around this tra or through this transverse plane. That movement is happening along this transverse plane. So, that planar knowledge is useful for us. We have got, as we've just seen, we have got this sagittal single G double T. We have got this sagittal plane, and we can already see that any movement of a ball and socket joint, whether it be the hip, the shoulder, moving in front or behind the body, those are examples of flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. And those movements happen along this sagittal plane, okay? So it's really important that we get that message home. Any kind of flexion or extension. Now, if we now look at, let me choose a blue. If we now look at the frontal plane here, okay, we can say it separates the body into front and back or, or um, anterior, posterior, but we're much more interested in here saying that if this individual takes their hip and abducts it or their shoulder, and abducts that shoulder, we see its movement along this plane. So movement along, along the uh, frontal plane are abduction and adduction, okay? Abduction and adduction along those planes in that way. Now the transverse, is probably is our t most testing example, I think, the transverse plane, the key thing we wanna get across here, or we want the students to understand, is that if this individual rotates either 180, 360, 90 degrees, it doesn't really matter, if they rotate their whole body in this way, they are moving along this transverse plane. But the real kind of key nugget for me is if that they even twist choose a different color if they even just twist 
their uh, their arm they, they turn it inside the socket or indeed they turn their leg out for example or or in for example then this is an example of rotation and rotation as a movement pattern happens along or through this transverse plane so by going through that with the students i hope that what you can see is we are going to be able to culminate in being able to demonstrate some exam some exam answers in specific context with our athlete profiles and perhaps more importantly we can then invite the students in to submit their answers and I want to say something here we're making these questions tough not because we think every question on their exam is going to be tough we hope there's a balance but what we're doing is we're looking at like if you look at this one just structurally it's hard you've got to make 10 answers for five marks now we don't believe that's reality in the in the exam we think that probably in the exam you'll get given a whole load of these completed if it comes in the form of a table and you just have five to fill in or something along those lines right but what we're doing is we don't see the point in giving it away within the revision we're making the student practice and work through that knowledge in the fullest way possible and again uh, in this example you know which way is this athlete facing is the first question they have to decide before they establish that this is abduction and that this is movement through the frontal plane so look that's what we're going to do on the piece side i think it's going to be really really valuable i think i hope you can see the value of that and the students are going to be you know they're going to be worked hard and they're going to they're going to have some good experiences i think okay so that's two two little <clears throat> excuse me two little mini episodes done just just by way of demonstration really slightly different stylistically but the but the principles are the same i hope you can see there the interaction with the notes pages to the uh, practice questions uh, to the little tour elements we're obviously going to demonstrate the answers on the screen as well so we're hoping that's going to be useful for people so we're, we're waiting to receive questions basically and i think marta you're you're actually they're coming via the internet to mike to marta and i think i'm doing the one answering so let's yeah. see um let, let's see what we can go with Yes. So um, one of the questions, the first question that many people are asking is whether the show has is going to only be available live mm -hmm. or will also be available um, on catch up. OK, so the good news about that is you can watch it live or on demand. So that's, it. you know, it, it's best of all worlds, really. Um, what I would really hope and, uh, you know, I, it's partly an appeal, really, but it also it's it's for the benefit of the students. There's two there's two things here. One on the live show. If you guys attend live, it means that we can keep doing this long term and we don't have to charge for it. Basically, if you guys attend live, that is the case. So I strongly request of you that you do everything possible to do that. Um, secondly, the other thing is we are going to have numerous elements which are designed specifically for student interaction. So I mentioned one of them a, a bit earlier on, which was um, the part where the students could submit answers online and they could potentially have their answer published and stuff. That's going to be an example of things that we do so that is only going to be really as rich within the live experience and there's also going to be sort of some chat elements to that but i but really do everything humanly possible to attend live please because if you if, if we end up with light audiences this doesn't it, it basically doesn't happen so you guys need to you guys need to come mm -hmm. the second question's got to do with the planes and axes oh, um planes and, and that planes or or axes on, planes and axes um I, someone's did the planes. Asking, I know someone is asking um which exam board is the planes and axis session for ah. please well i didn't do a planes and axis mm -hmm. session okay. i did a session on planes so that planes covers all exam boards and of course this is the reason why in that case i chose not to do the axes so i'm going to have a whinge here because it gives me an opportunity to do it um so the axes there is there is only one of the exam boards which has which has the axes at gcc level that has them correct i'm not going to name it i'm not going to shame but there's only one that has it correct and there are four different versions across the six exam boards now that is not acceptable so it, it basically means we can't cover that without doing individual sessions. Now, if you go on to the Everlearner, I have recorded, I've even said black is white on the WJC Educast boards because they that's how they've got it written for the axes. They are wrong, outright wrong. I mean, I'm li literally teaching black is white on, um, on those videos because they've literally got it wrong. Um, so if you want that, you have to go to the website. It's just not possible for me to put out six different live shows on axes for free because people can't get their exam board preparations right so we, we we have no choice but to avoid it the planes is absolutely um uh is is relevant for all of the exam boards but the axes yeah that, that that's how it is if you want the exam board specific you have to use our on-demand materials all covered but you have to use it there
Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it's also worth us um, explaining how they will, uh, they how they can get hold of the uh, notes page. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the way we're going to do the notes pages is we're going to provide the schools and also in the descriptions in advance of the first. So for example, with the GCSE PE, we're going to provide in advance of the first GCSE PE session the entire batch of notes. Okay, so you'll have an entire batch of GCSE PE notes that are there and you can print them off, you can give them out all in one go or you can hold them back and deliver them to the students as you see fit. Indeed, the students can print them at home and get them that way as well because they'll be in the description of each individual show, but that's that's how it's going to work. We haven't completely decided yet on the A-level and the Cambridge Technical and the, and the BTEC 3. We haven't totally decided yet whether we're going to do like a, a global A-level note, so we're going to break it into four parts, social, cultural, biomechanical, physiological, psychological. We'll probably break it up. Um, but yeah, you'll have them in advance and we'll deliver them to you so that all you have to do is print them for the students. And the same for Spanish, am I, if I may say. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> same, sorry. <laughs> I could sometimes forget about that. That's bad, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's that's how that's going to work uh, in in, ex in exactly in exactly that way. So for, for me, that's for me that's a, a really important part. And, and I, can I just repeat again, if you are on the piece, I don't mean to... Um, neglect the Spanish stuff but right. if if you are on the P side it's really important you get those athlete profiles to the students in advance of uh, the sessions because we're going to base the entire sessions around those five individuals so you really you really should get those guys you should get the students familiar with those individuals so that they know where those ideas are coming from and we'd really like to think that you might even use those athlete profiles within your own revision leading up you may even be able to preempt what we're going to do because of the types of descriptions it's a bit like the old AQA GCSE it's that case study you might even be able to preempt some of the stuff that we're going to do because of the nature of what the case of what the athlete profiles are so so do feel free to um so do feel free to to get those out so um but just back onto the calendar ever so briefly marta i yep. think would be useful uh let me just go back i think we're now that just back on the calendar so first sessions we've got folks uh first sessions we've got so let's do the spanish first first session comes here on the 17th of April. 17th of April. <coughs> you mm -hmm. seem to have that memorized. No, I've got it here on screen. Okay. <laughs> so 17th of April is the first session. And basically, you see on the on the Spanish there, it's effectively two sessions per, per week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, give or take are your days. Okay. So that's how the Spanish is working. There's a range of one to twos, four to fives, and so on and so on. So they're available then. On the PE, it's a bit more mixed up because we've got more content there. The A level starts on the 16th. And the GCSE starts on the 18th. So you can obviously uh, duck in and out of those as you need to. Um, but as I said before, it would be really good if you guys did as many numbers as possible uh, attend live. And we hope it's going to be worthwhile to do exactly that. And it's nice to have that little kind of um, that little kind of community feeling around things. So, um, so yeah, I hope that's going to be useful. I, sh I should add just one other point, which I think is important. Our ideal scenario within these sessions, some, some of you might not be able to get to this ideal, I think, but our ideal scenario is that the students are with you as the teacher. So they're in, they're in the classroom with you, but they're on individual devices. Now, I guess there's a couple of restrictions there. One, do you have the computer room devices available? That kind of thing is a restriction. The other thing is, do you have YouTube unblocked for students? Now, I'm sure there's a work around there, so I'm giving you as much notice as possible. In my opinion, that's where the student will get the most out of the session because they can interact as an individual at the right level. Okay, and don't worry, we're not going to enable anything daft to happen like silly chat messages to go in and things. We, it, it's all moderated and, and careful and that kind of thing. Um, but the other thing is, of course, they'll have a device that they can then submit some answers on as well. So that I think that would be really nice if you can achieve it. If not. Obviously, you're you're in between versions. You can have the students on the big, uh, watching the big, big screen in the classroom, and you can have them, of course, taking the sessions um, from home. So yeah, so that's that. Any more questions, mm -hmm. Marta? Um, no, the last question is only about regarding this session. Whether this session is going to available uh, be available later on, as some people are finding it a bit tricky to get home with this lovely yeah, weather. There's no, yeah, it is <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. We've got a blizzard outside our window. Um, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. So the, the session, the same link, the session is available. Okay. So it immediately becomes a, an on-demand session. So, f so feel free to, um, to use that as you need, as you see fit. And, um, yeah, it, it's available and it, it's kind of, you know, effectively it's, um, it, it's the same, it's the same experience. And I should say really, I mean, you've seen us today move in between the canvas and the teaching to this live space here, and you can see us on the camera and we're answering questions. That's exactly how it's going to be for the students as well. Okay. So, the majority of it is going to be teaching and demonstrating answers, that kind of stuff. But we're all, we are also going to answer their questions. And I come back to that live and single device experience that really would allow the students to, I don't know, get the most, get the most out of it, mm -hmm. really.
I'm sorry. Um, there's there's one one last question. Um, it doesn't seem to be clear. Uh, I think for some people, it may not be very clear on what the students need to do. Um, and someone's asking for the sessions that take place later in the evenings or during other lessons, mm -hmm. uh, during or lesson times. Do we need to get the students to subscribe to the Ever Learner on YouTube? Do the, the do the students have to be subscribed no. to to, to attend? So the way the way subscribing so YouTube is a completely open source tool. Okay, so anyone can go to a YouTube link and and can take part in that um and can take part in that um uh session. There's there's no restriction. They wouldn't be able to put a message into the chat unless they have a Google account. So they would for the chat. Uh, we would also obviously receive chat via places like Twitter and Facebook as well. But again, you might have that restricted at school. But no, just to be clear on the subscribing, the way subscribing works, it's it's like it's probably analogous to um, bear in mind this is free. It's probably analogous to you've subscribed to a channel on your TV provider, okay, and uh, it's available for you to watch. Now, what happens with the subscribers is as we get more subscribers, it basically unlocks for us as the channel owners the ability to put certain content out. So that's why we'd really like you to subscribe. The other thing, of course, is you guys get notifications when the session's coming up. So from your students' perspective, if they're subscribed to us, they're going to get a reminder that we're going live in five minutes doing session seven or whatever it happens to be. So it's useful from just that practical perspective. But we're asking you to subscribe, not because you'll be locked out, but because having subscribers on the channel means that we can do the work for free that we want to provide you guys for free. So it's that's where the trade-off comes, you know. Um, so we hope it's a fair one. It, it doesn't cost anything. It's just the worst, worst, worst case scenario for, subscri for subscribers is you might get um, in your YouTube listings, you might get a video by us offered to you that you might not want to watch. That That's the worst case. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions, Marta, or are we, um, are we signing off? I think, uh, I think that it uh oh someone wants a reminder of where they can get the p athlete profile uh, well first of all if you're on the show now just go down to the description it's there just there i think it's about third so if you yeah it's there just go in the description and it's there otherwise um we'll send it around to everyone but it but it is there for you okay and just it's just a google drive file and you can um yeah you can you can print them out and get them out to your students um, yeah. All right. Yep. Happy. Think that's right. It thank, now, yep. thank you to everybody for attending. Thanks to Mike for doing the chat. It's appreciated. Thanks to everyone who asked and uh, asked the question. And we'll see you on. Was it the sixteenth? Is the first session? Yes. I'm already planned. That's uh, good. My GCSE is done, so <laughs> I'm already planned. I've got to, uh, no, so that's an A level session. I've still got to plan the A level ones. To be fair, but um, but yeah. Oh my God, the weather. Um. Okay. Yeah. Good to see you all. Going to switch it off. Take care. Have a good evening. Get see home later. safely. Cheers. Bye.